So once again, good morning. It's Sunday morning, day two of the big install. Yesterday was nothing but a bunch of uh, challenges. Uh, bought that hydraulic table lift, didn't come with hydraulic fluid. So we had to take time out to go buy that. Then there were some bigger fittings, some two inch fittings that Scott needed. Had to go out and buy those. By the time we finally got the tank off the truck and rolled into the backyard, it was then discovered that the Schedule 80 fittings that we had for the one inch, one and a half, and two inch holes in the back and bottom of the tank didn't fit. Don't understand why there's some not a standardization of fittings, especially for Schedule 40 for as expensive as they are. But that's the industry, or all industries. So anyhow, in frustration, uh, we kind of moved everything into the garage, uh, took all the salt water I had in the truck, pumped it into um, the vats where the live rock was, and uh, brought the truck back home. And in the process of uh, pumping the water out of the containers in the truck, thinking well, I probably wasn't going to get back to that job until next weekend at the soonest, got a call from Scott who had stopped at a local tropical fish store. And lo and behold, surprisingly, they actually had all the fittings we needed, or at least the fittings that we believe we need. Still have to confirm they're going to fit, but so far they are smaller in diameter than the ones we have, so hopefully they will. That being the case, we'll move all the stuff out of the uh, garage and uh, start draining the water out of the tubs that the live rock is in. And the first thing we need to do is Scott has to get the uh, plumbing uh, on the inside of the overflow in place before we take the tank into the house. Once we get the tank into the house, uh, we then have to lift it up and get it up onto the stand and then get the fittings through the bottom of the tank in place. At that point, Scott can then go outside and start working on the plumbing in the filter cabinet and Condi and Reggie can start uh, assembling the rock structure inside the tank and it being just a little bit after 8 o'clock this morning, uh, we've got the entire day and hopefully all of our preparation and uh, challenges are out of the way and we can actually get to work assembling the tank. So, that being said, for the second time, come along, see how it's done, or in this case, how it's not done. <laughs> Okay, so first thing we did was make sure that the uh, new bulkheads fit, and they do, so this part of the project is a go. What Scott needs to do now is work on getting the plumbing inside the internal overflow, which will consist of a, a two-inch Durzo standpipe, a uh, one-and-a-half inch um, return line from the filter system and a one inch emergency overflow but all will come out through the back of the tank and then we can move the tank into the house uh, one minor little challenge and that is that lip there going into the house but that shouldn't be too big a issue and then once it is in place then the next thing we need to do is while it's on the table lift and hopefully the table lift does what it's supposed to do is that it'll lift it up and we can get it up onto the stand and then at that point I have to get the three bulkheads through the bottom of the tank in position and tightened uh, at that point Condi can then start putting the rock work into the tank but I think the first thing I need to do is get these uh, tabs off the front corner of the tank of the stand so I can get uh, we can get it slid up on there. 
So the two tubs of live rock were refilled last night with the water we brought in the truck, so they've been managed to keep uh, wet in there. And of course that water's being pumped down the street. I think Reggie is uh, taking the uh, gate off the uh, entrance back into the yard so we can roll the tub back in there. And we, Scott and Condi, are working on the uh, fittings for the internal overflow. And then this over here is the filter system box. The uh, drain pipes will exit out through that hole from the back side of the tank into the sump. This here is the ATO reservoir. The chiller will be under there. The rest of the equipment needs to fit in there. And then uh, all that other equipment that we had was staged here inside. So we can slowly start moving this back out and get it all sorted out. If you're not familiar with the internal overflows function inside the tank, essentially it's a box that rises from the bottom of the tank, typically at the back or rear corner, which forces the water to rise up to its top where it then spills through some slots or teeth, thus skimming the water's surface into the box. It also offers an area to place various plumbing lines, such as the return lines from water pumps, along with a means for the water inside the overflow box to exit. And that means is a simple standpipe, in this case called a Durzo standpipe, which quietly drains the water out of the overflow. So you can see the Durzo standpipe over here with the uh, air vent at the top. I think we're going to probably put a little valve there to control it. A little further down is the two returns that will come up. One will pass through there, the other will pass through over here returning water into the tank and then to this side here you can see the hole down there uh, will be the emergency overflow those are bulkheads going in the side of the overflow I'll take these out of the way watch your head Scott has installed the return line from the filter's pump inside the overflow, which splits that flow into two separate lines. He's now placing bulkheads into the upper sides of the overflow that will pass the returned water just under the water's surface. Okay, so the bulkheads are in. There is a two-inch standpipe Durzo drain, a one-and-a-half-inch return line from the filter system, and a one inch emergency drain out of the overflow. And that arrangement inside the overflow looks like this. There's the emergency standpipe overflow. There's the Durzo. And the return splits as a Y and connects to that barb and that barb, which are returns that will be inside the tank. So Big step number one in getting the tank into the house is uh, now basically complete. And now it's time to move the 800 pound aquarium the next step on its journey to its final location. This portion of the move requires it to pass over the doorway's threshold and does so with less opinion and a whole lot less chaos than its first part of the trip.
Now that the tank has made its way into the house, its next step in its journey is to position it in front of the stand. But it also needs to be elevated up about 24 inches so as to be able to slide the tank off the table lift and onto the metal stand. Can I get the wrap on first before you yeah, it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so we're going to tip it forward and slide it all. I figured we put, put the tank up here first, then we'll take the wrap off. Like more up here. Okay, we're we'll going to get the back wrap off of these. It's now time to remove the protective paper lining off the back side of the aquarium. And this reminds me of a Jack the Pocket Knife Guy portion of a previous LA Fish Guys episode. My concern here is dripping hydraulic fluid from the lift's cylinder onto the new hardwood floors. Okay, be aware you're, you're limited on the top there now as well. In fact, you're actually too high. Um, oh, about a three and a half, four inches high. high. But yeah, yeah, this thing good. As a result of the cabinetry, we have a narrow window of space to slide the tank in horizontally. But after confirming both the top and the bottom, we can now proceed pushing the tank forward onto its stand. is finally in position. Uh, we're in the process of squaring things up, but uh, so far it looks pretty good. As you can see, the uh, tank protrudes out beyond the cabinet a little bit, so you can see in through the sides, there's the bowed front. Okay, so now with the tank in the house, on the stand, the first next challenge, I'm getting tired of these challenges, is there appears to be a gap between the uh, tank, uh, the plywood, and the stand. So we're trying to lift the stand to shim it a little bit, see if that eliminates the Gap. Hold on, hold on. I got it. I got it. Move the wood real quick. Pull the handle out. Hold the cell phone. Oh, there's the pump. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so the bulkheads in the bottom of the tank are going in. That's the uh, suction for the circulation right, pump the and the two buckets. returns. Channel locks, I should be able to get channel locks. And then he's working on Wait, getting the nuts tightened on uh, the back side of the bulkheads. The tank on the table. So, one step closer to uh, the first big hurdle of the morning. Next time you're near Long Beach, California, Take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, 
as well as fresh and saltwater fish ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bizarre. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week, call 562-438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz. Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. And so Condi and Reggie are now bringing in the first tub of uh, pre-drilled and pre-pinned uh, live rock into the house. This live rock, which is what I call container rock, was previously power washed and then cured. So with a tub of freshly received live rock that's been cooking or curing in this big container for probably the last two months, um, to try to get rid of any loss of life that's occurred on it. Uh, we're now beginning to pull pieces out and Condi is here today and we've again mapped out or marked out on the driveway the footprint of the tank and uh, he is beginning to create another uh, live rock coral sculpture that will be done in pieces and then transported to the job site probably a month down the road uh, lifted up put into the tank and then all the additional pieces will be uh, drilled and pinned to it but this for all intents and purpose will be the basic uh, framework or, or structural foundation of the live rock sculpture in that 400 gallon um, bowfront aquarium bowfront reef tank I should say so as a result of the delayed installation yesterday and the offloading of the truck last night, I forgot this morning to bring back with me the flat cart. So I'm using the rollers or casters from the bottom of the 55 gallon trash container to wheel the tub of sculptured live rock into the house. So now comes the next challenge and that is remembering the pieces that we uh, assembled or how we assembled them previously out of this tub so that they can begin to go into the tank. Got extra pieces here. And again a tub full of pre-drilled and pre-pinned uh, sections. Okay so the fish is in the tank. We're in the process of getting the first fittings uh, put in there. I would tend to want to think more towards the, the yeah, like that. Um, as, although as you get the sculpture built, you may want to adjust them, but I would tend to think more pointed inwards as opposed to outwards. Um, so those are the returns coming through the bottom of the tank, and then he's got... Uh, Do this or a silicone or no? <sighs> uh, it's a suction, so it's not going to come out. Um, yeah, I got it outside, I think. 
So he is inside the tank. Uh, we've got the uh, return and the uh, intake in place. Next step will be to start putting in the large pieces of rock. So we are moving forward. Did Scott get done down underneath here? All right, so there's Scott's got the uh, suction lines or the return lines for the two pumps through the bottom of the tank. And I think he's also working there on, uh, that's the suction right there, which will ultimately go out through that opening. So we are uh, starting to move forward now. So with the plumbing on the tank portion done, it's now the cabinet here on the outside of the tank that we're working on as far as the filter system is concerned. The man in the box will be the one cleaning the aquarium as all the water passes through it. Um, and I brought him a squeegee and a couple of filter pads and he's just going to be in there 24-7. Whisk, 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 whisk. Um, so the chiller will be at one end. Its exhaust is down there. You've got uh, the large sump in place, ATO reservoir, and somehow we're going to end up fitting two pumps, uh, a sterilizer, which I guess we're going to replace the unit that I bought with another stronger yet uh, more compact unit, and then all the uh, Apex energy bars and such will be up over there with all the uh, plumbing and such, so uh, it's starting to... Uh, come along at least I got guys working in two different places now instead of everybody trying to work in the same spot we've got uh, about half of the foundation pieces in the tank now where the tiles at bro? on the table right out there oh, right here. Here. oh there they are a um, couple of the columns of uh, pin drilled and pinned rock in place and uh, again, there's a, a man in the aquarium who will be uh, making sure all the fish stay uh, in line. And uh, actually, we'll call him a 24-7 algae cleaner. <laughs> Mr. Placostomus. <laughs> um, so the rock is starting to come along. And uh, everybody seems to be in a good spirits at this point. So a lot of times it's the artistic focus that... Uh, gets everybody a little grumpy but uh, it's all working out give you a little idea of the the bow on the tank and how far it protrudes beyond the bookcases here so I think the word that's going to describe this aquarium as far as its view is um, immersive uh, as you walk in uh, and stand in front of the tank you are literally immersed in a coral reef wall uh, that will be full of fish as well as uh, variety of different colored corals. The rods used to pin together the live rock pieces are made of carbon fiber. This ensures that they are structurally strong and material-wise that they won't negatively react or decay due to the salt water that they'll be submerged within. So you can have a, see how we pre-drilled a lot of the stuff to try to get a little ahead of the game and it's a matter of uh, remembering where the pieces go and then getting them to fit back together. Okay, so we have these little acrylic boxes or pockets that I'm going to call it that I have cemented to the inside just back two inches from the black edge of the tank and about a foot down from the top of the tank. What those are will be the mounts that will hold the Tunzi internal pumps. Now the Tunzi internal pumps are typically held on uh, with a magnet. But this material is about an inch and a quarter inch and a half thick, probably too thick to uh, hold the magnet properly. So the pocket there made out of quarter inch material uh, will serve as the means of attaching the Tunzies with their magnets both on the inside of the tank. And again, they're about a foot down from the top. So we'll go ahead and do the one here on the other side in just a second. And we now have one mounted on the right hand side of the tank, so there'll be a tunzi to either the left as well as the right, about 12 inches down, uh, that'll be internal water movement. And that's in addition to the flow coming back from the returns at the top of the overflow 
and then the returns that are going to come down through the bottom of the tank from the circulation pump. Okay, so the drainage out of the tank via the internal overflow comes out of the back of the tank through this cutout uh, in the wall into our filtration cabinet. The big two inch line is the actual Durzo siphon or standpipe that's in the overflow and that runs all the way over into the top of the sump. It splits into two. It'll then flow over and into some socks that'll be in there and then into the rest of the sump. In addition, there was a one inch pipe inside the internal overflow that serves as an emergency overflow in case for some odd reason the internal overflow itself gets too full and that line runs out and comes into the side of the sump there as well. So the uh, drainage portion into the tank is coming along. Next thing to do is get the uh, some bulkheads in the RODI ATO container there um, for the ATO pump. So we're going to put a little John Guest bulkhead in there, um, the quarter inch line. This be in the reservoir here. So get that out of the way and then we can start working on the actual return side for the pump. Uh, so Condi is coming along on his uh, reef sculpture. It is looking very realistic, very uh, reefy here from the side. Extends way out at multiple angles, multiple pieces with that uh, branching piece in there is really very uh, cool. Um, and the homeowners seem to be uh, quite pleased so far. And I think the artist himself is uh, pleased. Yes? Mm hmm. Good. That always makes us happy when the artist is happy. The filter builder is sorting out things. How's it coming along? It's coming. Slowly but surely. You can see here we've got, uh, call that the uh, return or the filter pump, and that will somehow interface with the chiller and then connect to that line, which takes it up to the uh, two returns coming out of the top of the overflow. You can see back there will be the circulation pump. These are um, uh, dart golds, the hybrids, which I guess means they change out the impeller and it'll either do pressure or um, uh, high flow. Um, again, there's the drain line into the filter, the filter, the pump coming out of it, which we're working on at the moment. So it's starting to come along. Okay, so we're at another point where he's uh, built up the left-hand side and we're now working on the center and the right-hand side as well as a little bit of what he'll call an island down there at the bottom. But it's starting to look uh, quite impressive. I know the homeowner is very pleased. Again, you can see the uh, dimensionality as I like to refer to it as. Um, things protruding out, caves, nooks, crannies once filled with water it ought to be very very impressive and again I think the key word here was immersive okay so the second pump is now in place drilled into the uh, sump itself uh, with it now being connected to the return line going back inside the house uh, he's got a T there which is the beginnings of a manifold that will ultimately send water over to the uh, refrigeration unit and that in turn will return into the sump. We still need to drill the hole there. Um, and then uh, at some point, I don't think that's going to happen tonight, there's all the apex equipment as well as the lighting. I think the goal tonight is to uh, get the plumbing secured enough that we can actually pump the water from the truck uh, into the tank and get uh, half the filter system running to circulate the water and then we'll return at a later time to do all the fine-tuning electronics. With it now approaching 8 p.m. on a Sunday evening and being a very cool 50 degrees. Right there Mr. Polar Bear? Yeah. 
we're quickly approaching the end of our second day on the job. A lot of people use Teflon tape, and if you read any of the threaded fitting manufacturers' pages or the manufacturers of threaded fittings, they all tell you, do not use Teflon tape on threaded fittings. I've never had a leak using this stuff. I've had leaks with Teflon tape, so I have come to avoid it and instead favor this nasty, messy crap. Slippery, too. Yeah, that's what happens when you running on fumes. Get sloppy. All right, gonna need an extra hand here, Jamie. Wanna okay. Put down and... So the boys are redoing little bits and pieces of the previous reef sculpture inside the tank. There you go fine-tuning the Swing look. Swing it a little to your right. And Jim sure is going to have fun putting coral on that thing. About, yeah. about an inch and a half. Longer arms. Exactly. There you go, right there. Yeah, I think that paint would break a lot. There we go. Just go in. Description, Scott is very tired. It's been a very long day. We've been here since uh, about 8.30 this morning and it is 8.30 tonight, so we got a full 12-hour day plus our time yesterday. Um, got it all plumbed up, other than uh, got to finish up the closed loop when we get the other UV sterilizer, but we've got our manifold set up here to feed our GFO reactor um, and feed our chiller. The chiller returns back to the sump. Return line goes back into the tank through the overflow and up and out through a pair of three-quarter inch uh, lock lines. Got our drain line set up here. Jim calls it a Durzo, but it's kind of more of a Herbie setup. Uh, we'll be able to fine-tune the flow a little bit coming through there to quiet it down using the gate valve. We have the emergency overflow in there just in case there's any issues, which there shouldn't be. And um, there's no no loop or, or dropping part. That's all a direct downward flow from the tank. Correct, yep. Uh, so that will minimize the siphon coming out of there. Yep. We had to get creative over here. Uh, when Jim had the sump made, they put the bulkheads in a little bit close. So we took a T, cut it down, cut the reducers down, and made it work. It was a bit of a fun job to get that in there. And obviously, when you're plumbing these kind of things, there's all kinds of fun things that you don't anticipate. But overall, actually came out very clean. And You got the ATO. Got the ATO all set up. Um, obviously, we don't have the Apex plugged in yet, but the Apex is all programmed. I spent um, some leader time. meter. Um, spent some time earlier this week getting the Apex all programmed. So really, it's just a matter of mounting everything and plugging everything into the appropriate outlets. All the outlets are labeled, so that'll go pretty smooth. I just got to figure out where all the power bars and stuff are going to go. Um, we'll also have a dose on this system for calcium and alkalinity supplement um, so we'll get that set up too uh, and uh, that'll go in when we set up the apex and do the lights and whatnot but I'm pretty much done out here hopefully there's no pipes that I forgot to glue that would be a disaster <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah looks like we're all pretty well good to glue go. in there huh I do yep okay it's glued so we should be all glued and everything should be hunky-dory and I pray there's no leaks. I've never had a leak on any of my plumbing before, but there's a first for everything and it's jobs like these that scare me the most when it comes to that. But uh, we should be good to go. Now we're just waiting for them to finish the rock and we can add water and I can go home and have a beer. Yeah! <laughs> all right, time to start putting some water into the tank. That's hooked up to the 200 gallon container with another 100 gallons of RODI salt water uh, and that should be flowing from the truck. All the way and there it is. Cloudy for days. Yeah, I think you mentioned that to me to take a while for it to clear up. That's fine. Hey, Reggie, do my pump, right? Yes. Okay, I have a, uh, 
if you use two real have, have, have another pump in the van, brand new one. Don't have another hose. I do. Long enough one? Sure, you. So the tank is filling up. It's beginning to, or just about ready to flow into the uh, internal overflow there in the back. And it'll begin to go out into the filter system. Water's a little cloudy, but we kind of expected that. And it should be pretty soon ready to flow out into the filter system, where he'll then get the pump primed and get it running. All right, looks like we're ready to fire up. You should let the owner plug it in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So the water's flowing from the tank into the uh, first chamber of the sump, which in turn is like a sediment tray or a bin, and then it rises up and flows over into the uh, filter socks, passing down into the socks into the reservoir portion, and then ultimately is sucked up by the water pump and sent back into the tank. Okay, so it's running inside the tank. And it's going to obviously take a while to clear up. So we still have another day's worth of work getting all the lights hooked up, all the Apex equipment hooked up. Uh, there's still the ATO out in the reservoir to get connected. So make sure to come on back for the next part. And until then, keep moving forward.